there. Um, thank you so much for asking me to be here. Uh, before I get started, when Sana called me and she had this idea for a conference, and she's like, we really want a social entrepreneur to come and talk, and we want you to tell stories, and we'd really like you to talk about balance. And I just laughed, because <laughs> being a social entrepreneur is really not that different than being any other kind of entrepreneur. And that, uh, <laughs> um, so uh, that particular day I had been on, uh, that week, I'd been on a half a dozen planes and my inbox was exploding and I had more meetings in my calendar than I, hours in the week. And that morning, I had gone down to the store on the corner and bought five pairs of underwear for 25 bucks. Because uh, something had to give, and I decided that would be the laundry. And uh, that's what happens, right, in the life of an entrepreneur. So thank you for having me. Thank you for not making me speak about balance. Um, I'm excited to have that conversation, but I, I'm not equipped. Um, but I do think a lot, <laughs> I do think a lot about passion, so thanks for letting me be here. So for seven years, I ran a philanthropic network called Spark, where we invest money, time, and attention in grassroots women's organizations all over the world. Uh, with 10,000 members, Spark is the largest network of millennial philanthropists anywhere. And uh, we also have 50% male members making us the only women's organization with that rate of male participation. And over the seven years while I was there, our 10,000 women and men invested in 136 women's organizations in 17 countries. And as executive director, it was my responsibility to oversee the philanthropic investments. So several years ago, I traveled to Tanzania where I met this young woman. I visited a girls' school and my job that day was to scour for signs of impropriety. Was there a school building? Did they have books? What was the number of girls there, the numbers they had told us they would be in their grant proposal? And I had the opportunity to interview this young woman with the help of an interpreter. So my first, we sort of got to know each other initially, but my core question to her was, what is your greatest barrier to getting an education? And the interpreter responded for her, a paddle. I looked at her, I looked back at the interpreter, I looked back at her, I was like, 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 a, like paddle? Like a, a paddle? Yes, a paddle. This young woman traveled three days to get to school, one of which she spent canoeing. And her last trip, her paddle cracked. Now, to get this girl to school with everything we thought she needed, and by we, I mean the experts. She needed school fees, she needed a uniform, she needed books sanitary supplies, it hadn't occurred to me that she may need a paddle, right? We know if a girl gets educated that she will educate her family and her community and her life outcomes will be drastically different. So too will those of her community. The cost to send this girl to school with everything I thought she needed was $1,000. The cost of the paddle was eight bucks. So this girl was $8 away from changing her life for a generation. Uh, and I tell that story because throughout my career I've had really a bl the blessed opportunity to be in rooms like this. Really smart women talking about leadership and leaning in. And by and large the advice that I've heard has been fantastic. But sometimes you just really need a paddle. Uh, <laughs> so I think there are three common pieces of advice about passion that need a reboot. Um, the world we've inherited is drastically different from that of our mothers, and we need to advance the advice. So the first is do what you love. That sounds great. I don't think it's accurate. Uh, I think you should do what you must. For all entrepreneurs, there are moments when you are in it, right? you are working really, really hard, and you just will not love your job. It's not possible, it's too brutal. Um, but if you are doing what you must, you're doing what you can't help but do, the path is clear. It will be hard and you will struggle, but it will be clear. Um, I didn't start out thinking I was going to be a professional feminist activist, but that's what happened. Uh, my university had a work study program where you could check IDs at a library 
or you could go work for a local nonprofit. And so I chose the latter. Uh, and I got a job working at a domestic violence shelter. And it was my responsibility four days a week from 6 a.m. to noon to check women in. And so there you are. You're sitting with women after probably the worst night of their life. And you would hope you'd spend that time consoling them, being with them. But that wasn't my job. My job was to help them fill out paperwork. Paperwork to get on food stamps, paperwork to get their kids into new schools, paperwork to get new driver's licenses with different names. It was like form after form after form after form. It was heartbreaking. Their needs were great, and the bureaucracy was just maddening. I believed there had to be a better way to help women help themselves. And so I set about doing it. I started volunteering for all these different women's policy organizations. I got a degree in gender policy. And when I was spending all my free time doing this work, I realized it was my work. Um, do I love that I spend my days fighting for basic dignity for women and girls? I, I do not. I do not. I love like dancing around in my underwear and playing and having fun. This is not. If there was anything else I could do, I would. But this is what I must do. So that is what I do do. The second piece of advice that needs a reboot is follow your passion. That statement is totally loaded. Uh, it, it presumes that you know what your passion looks like in practice, and that if you just followed it, you could totally attain it. Um, and if you asked a dozen professional feminist activists uh, how one would become a professional feminist activist, you would get a hundred different answers. Because passion and practice is different for every single person. I think it is more accurate to say, follow the opportunity. The lifeblood of all entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs included, is the desire to solve a problem. And the truth is, there's always more than one way to solve a problem. So each new solution is an opportunity. And you have to see it like that, or you really, you won't get through the day. Uh, I recently co-founded Fast Forward. So Fast Forward is an accelerator for tech nonprofits. Our first cohort is this summer, and it's made up of five really incredible tech nonprofits. They're gonna receive investment, mentorship, and training to solve some of the world's biggest problems around health, education, the environment, and human rights. And it may seem incongruent, like being a professional feminist activist and now working in technology, but it's not. And I'm not just talking about diversity I'm not just talking about STEM education. There's, feminist activism is core to technology. And I can tell you because in my time at Spark, I watched as mobile technology drastically changed my work. In seven years, I can't really describe how remarkable the difference was. In places where there is no doctor, Spark grantees were using mobile phones as mobile medical clinics. In places where women can't own bank accounts, and there are many places in the world where that is true, women were using, were using mobile technology as financial hubs. In, we were recently in Turkey where we worked with a group that was using uh, text alerts to track sexual and sectarian violence. It's really impressive what, folks, what women have been able to do with their phones. Uh, and it, this thought kept sort of bubbling up for me that uh, mobile technology, I believe, is the greatest tool for the empowerment of women since the pill. Um, and yeah, it is. <laughs> it's changing more things for more women in more places, and as a result, our communities have an opportunity to be drastically different. So this is a new path for me, and um, but it's really I'm really just following the opportunity, and it's put me in a new direction. But when you let your passion drive you, it'll take you where you're supposed to go. And um, because we're in here, and so many people are at least thinking about fundraising. Um, I think it's important to say that you know really only three percent of women tech companies are found are tech companies are founded by women, and a lot of that has to do with the funding pipeline. Um, so I'm proud to say that half of the companies that are coming through our cohort are founded by women and people of color, and all of the other companies are working on issues that disparately impact women and girls. Technology has a power and a scale for good that is unprecedented in the social sector in the world, but particularly in the social sector, where we're really seeing not technology just be an overlay for our solutions, but as the core to how we're going to change this condition and status of women. And I think it's time that more professional feminist activists get on that rocket.
So, yeah. So I'm following the opportunity. Yeah? To save the time, one question. Yeah. You can get a good one. Another question. Yeah. Shannon, um, what kind of fundraising are you doing for Fast Forward or are you? So we're a nonprofit, so we are raising donations. Uh, we're raising uh, $2 million by the end of this year, and then we're raising funding for the companies that are coming through our cohort. Okay. And can we give to your nonprofit? Yes. I will be here. <laughs> Collecting donations. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, because that's how we're going to start. When we think about the other uh, most problematic comment is what would you do when you're not afraid? I think fundraising in particular is something that women are really scared about. And you have to, yeah, you have to embrace the fear and become friends with her because she is the thing that's going to tell you when you're pushing hard enough and how to go further. So thank you for this. More questions? Okay. Thank you very much.